Hi everyone! Today we are going to talk about how to use Speed Controller in Yoast's Step 7 projects. So let's go ahead and start Step 7. We will create new project. Let's add Sematic 300 station. We will insert new rack. And add our CPU. After it's finished, let's save and compile. Now we will create new organization block number 35 and it suits us just fine because it has a cycle time of 100 milliseconds which appropriate for our project. And we will also create a couple of data blocks. So this will be controller output signal. Signal coming out of the transport delay. Signal coming out of our periodic link. and the signal coming out of our multiplication block. And to use our transport delay, we have to create new array. And if I want my delay to be, for example, of one second, I will create ten elements, array with ten elements. So if we multiply by our, by our cycle time, so we 10 multiplied by 0 0.1 will be 1 second. So to 
test our P controller, we need first to create a virtual control object. For this, we are going to use PID modular library. First, we will insert some transport delay. Here it is uh, called dead time block. After, we will introduce a periodic link block. And multiplication block. And in the new network, we will create a PID controller. Uh, we will not create it, we will just use PID controller already created from the standard library number 58. So now we have to put our variables in appropriate positions. Here in the data block number we will introduce a data block that we have created for our transport delay. And the dead time is one second, and the cycle is one hundred milliseconds. A periodic link time will be, for example, 20 seconds. Cycle time is the same. And here we can put our transit coefficient for our virtual control object but I will put I will put one okay So now our loop, our control loop is closed. We have a control action from the controller coming to our virtual control object, which consists of transport delay, a periodic link, and transient coefficient. Let's save it. So now we have to test it. Let's download our project to the simulator. We go to the project level and download it. Let's run a virtual controller. Now you will see why I used PID controller number 50 uh, data why I use PID controller represented by function block 58 because it has very good interface for the tuning and to see the transient processes 
so it's very useful now I'm going to go online with this blog and here in the options menu I'm going to choose curve recorder and commissioning menus In this uh, in these boxes, you can add your pit controller parameters. In the commissioning menu, you can switch over between manual and automatic modes, and also you can put your set point value. After you have changed uh, the controller, pit controller parameters, we need to download the block data. The configuration data was loaded, so OK. So now let's put some new set point value send it and start curve recorder here we can see the set point value our process value and manipulated variable value and here we can see the transient processes So it's very useful this graphical interface for your pit controller tuning and adjusting the parameters and see the transient processes for testing. I've changed only the basic settings of the pit controller, but you have here much more. You can test it for yourself. Now we can see that our process value is going closer and closer to our set point value. But uh, we can see that the pit parameters are not optimal, are very far from optimal, but for testing it's ok. Also one more thing, if you want to adjust these uh, scales, you go to settings and put, for example, not from minus 100 but from 0 the lower point and it's going to be better I think. I will put some new set point and we will see what's going on. So you can see the transient process for new adjusted uh, scale of the axis and that's it basically how you use a pit controller in your step 7 projects. I just gave you some basic info, you can uh, test it for yourself and learn more things in the manual for P controller in the Siemens help menu. But I hope that uh, the info I just gave you has been useful for you and you have learned something today. So don't forget to subscribe and like if you like, dislike if you dislike. 
and I hope to see you soon. And that's it for today.